there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. <laughs> Dog in the Midlands area, you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are. The Dog Rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Rescuing a dog is a joint effort, often beginning with a concerned caller and an inspector dispatched to investigate. But that journey continues with the vets, volunteers, kennel staff, and even animal behaviorists, all focused on giving them a fresh start. In today's show, we'll meet the dedicated people who help care for dogs like Tyson here. Just when they need it the most. Tyson, the camera's there. It's there. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Coming up, two skinny, staffy crosses need Inspector Hershey Bowles' help. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Why would you just ignore that? Can this terrified terrier be tamed? Scary person. Well, animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead is giving it her best shot. Just doing a little bit of swearing to see if I if I move away. Is Brandy here? Yes. Hello. And I'm going behind the scenes at Putney Animal Hospital. We get the big bars off and then we can gently take the other pins that are going into the bone. On a damp Friday in Birmingham, Inspector Hershey Bowl is feeling under the weather. <coughs> what a cough for. It's been a week, it just feels like forever, but it's keeping me awake at night and I don't do well when I've not slept. Makes Hershey very grouchy and grumpy. And to top it off, Hershey's having a busy day. She's about to move on to her next job when she's approached by a member of the public. I made a report about two dogs further on down. Oh, did you? Let me have a quick look, darling. The woman had previously put in a call to the RSPCA about a pair of skinny dogs she was concerned about nearby. Yeah, I've got that one, darling. I've got it on here. Luckily, it's on Hershey's list. You know the two dogs that you saw? They were What type of dogs were they? Staffies? I seem to think there was like a Staffordshire bull okay. tail top, but there was that thing that could count all the spine bones, okay. all the ribs. So OK, well, I'll good. definitely go next. I'll be them the next all one. Right, all right, darling, I'll call you. Bye. Bye. The public are really the eyes and ears of the RSPCA. If people didn't pick up the phone and, and call us, we wouldn't know what's going on. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir, can you open the door? It's the RSPCA. I've had a call about your dogs. Do you want to get dressed? Brilliant, thank you. Morning. Have I got you out of bed? There are two young men in the property. Come here, come here, come here, come here. As well as the two lively but very skinny staffy crosses Hershey was told about. All right, let them have a wee and then we'll get them both in. Come on then. Come on, darling. Come in. If we just pop in there, because I'm just going to have a chat to you. We've had a call regarding the physical condition of these two. When's the last time they saw a vet? The owners tell Hershey they inherited the dogs after a family bereavement. They say they've been feeding them, but haven't taken them to see a vet. 
So both these two were basically living with your mother, and then you two had them when your mother passed away, and that happened what, a year ago. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that, boys. What I'm going to do is, I, because of the physical condition of them, I have to take them to a vet. They might have to do some bloods and see what the issues are. If the vet says that they're suffering or likely to suffer, is what I suspect due to their weight, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a police officer out and the police officer will seize those dogs. The brothers agree to let Hershey take them to the vets, but even that's not straightforward. Do you have a lead? You don't have anything in the house? No leads could mean the dogs aren't being exercised either. Luckily, Hershey's got some with her. Sweetheart. Black Staffy Cross Bentley is first out. It's all right. Followed by Brindle Staffy Cross Rocky, with the help of his owner. Come on, sweetheart. Go <clears throat> oh, on then. You go in there for me, good boy. Oh, darling. <laughs> He's skin and bone, Rocky. You know. Regardless of whether this is a medical problem or whether this is underfeeding, uh, it's one of the two. Uh, and we don't expect an owner to know if their dog has a medical problem, but we do expect them to react to the symptoms of that, which is obviously losing weight. You know, all I want to do really is scream and shout at them both and say, are you crazy? You know, wh why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Why would you just ignore that? This kind of thing just uh, upsets me so much. Got an appointment at a vet, so I'll take them over there now. And I'll have a really good scream later <laughs> and get it out of my system. All right, darling. Hershey's grateful to the lady who tipped her off. She's happened to just see them as they've come running out of the property and actually bothered to pick up the phone and make that call. It's her that saved these dogs, not me. Hershey Bowl has just rescued two emaciated Staffy Crosses. She's brought them to see vet Mark Barton. Hi, Mark. Hi, Hershey. Hi. Um, I've got two dogs. They're fairly active, but um, and they're a bit wriggly, so it might just be easier for uh, you get one and I grab the other. They're really lovely. Hello, you two. Come on, darling. There we go, sweetheart. Come on, then. Thanks, Mark. All right, darling. This way, sweetie. We're funny. Dogs of this size can weigh around 20 kilos. Right, to check out just how Sorry, underweight Rocky and Bentley are, it's time for them to step on the scales. Right, so I'll eat Bentley first. And he's 12.6, so he's significantly underweight, in my opinion. And poor Rocky weighs even less. Good boy weight. Right, 12.2. At the moment, the cause of their weight loss is unknown. I don't stay, Bentley stay. To rule out any underlying medical conditions, Mark is taking blood samples. Oh, well done. Shall we? Often they will come back with no abnormalities at all, which often gives us a good indication this is just a lack of food alone. With the blood tests out of the way, Mark wants to have a closer look at Rocky and Bentley. All right, they just might not be so happy on the table. These look like dog fight wounds. So I suspect if they're only together, they've been Scrapping. Probably over food. Possibly, yep. Yeah. Having a field and um, body condition, generally very skinny. Looking at a body condition score, in my opinion, of between one and two, um, we generally do a scale of, of up to nine. One being emaciated or very, very thin, and nine being very fat. Oh, you're a good boy, Bendy. These nails are, are too long. I don't walk them because I've not got a lead. Right, brilliant. Um... <laughs> it looks like Rocky wants his turn. Come on, oh, I know, I know. OK. So that's the top of his pelvis, OK, is, is actually palpably, so when I'm feeling it more pronounced than the other ones. Do you describe them as emaciated? Yes, they're classed as emaciated. Rocky and Bentley can now enjoy a snack, but will they have an appetite? Oh, look. Silly question. No, you don't go for his. That's probably what's making you fight. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, look at him. Oh, bless. 
we fed them to see that they've eaten really very well. Assuming that the bloods are OK and there's no other clinical problem, these dogs should put on a significant amount of weight in a couple of weeks. They should look a, a huge amount better. Until Rocky and Bentley's case is resolved, they'll stay in kennels. Bentley, come on. Bentley, you're going to go in? Good boy. Right, then. But before Hershey takes them there, she wants to thank the person who made that initial call. I just wanted to let you know that I'm really, really grateful. Those dogs have only been rescued today because you put that call in. Had you not put that call in, you know, it wouldn't have happened. I am very grateful and well done. All right. Take care. Bye. Absolutely justified taking those dogs away today. And she's an absolute star for you. We'll find out later if it's just a lack of food that's caused Rocky and Bentley to be so thin. When our pets fall ill, our first port of call is usually to take them to the vet. And the RSPCA rely on the skills and expertise of these medical professionals just as much as we do. Some of their more serious cases end up at their animal hospitals, and Angelica Bell has been given exclusive access to the one at Putney. I've always wondered what it'd be like to be an RSPCA vet. Well, today I'm going to find out, and I'm late. Putney Animal Hospital has two operating theatres and eight wards, as well as consultation rooms and laboratory facilities. They handle emergencies, cases that inspectors bring in, and appointments with the local community. Hi, Angelica. Do you want Hi. to come through? Yes. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Clinical director Jules Bancroft has taken me under her wing for the day. So we're just going, this is our dog ward. Once in scrubs, my first job is to check in on some of the current residents. Hi, Emma. Hi. Good girl. Roxy was brought in when her owner was no longer able to cope. So you listen to the heart first. So she's a big dog. It's a fairly slow heartbeat. Zeus came in severely underweight. Good boy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, you can feel him. He's really bony, isn't he? Maddox is recovering from eye surgery. Just looking a little bit gunky there. We do the wound first and then clean down. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Brilliant. Good girl. Well and finally, there's the unusual case of Bob, who was found tied to a lamppost. He's obviously had quite major surgery, yeah. so it seemed quite a strange situation. We'll never truly know why Bob was abandoned mid-treatment, and he still has the pins in from that operation on his fractured leg. So should we get you out and have a look at you, Bob? Good boy. Good boy. We're concerned that there is some infection around one of the pin sites. We need to assess how well Bob can walk and whether his injured leg is healing. Hey, for it. Come on. Come on, Bob, good boy. This way. That's great. And then back up. Yeah, he's walking. He's putting a lot of weight on it. No, he's, he's walking well on that. It's a good sign that he can put weight on his leg. We'll see you later, Bob. And there's no shortage of other patients to get through. So how busy does it get on, you know, on an average day? We usually have two vets consulting all day and two vets operating all day, so they kept they kept yeah. fully busy, yeah. The hospital subsidises treatment for eligible patients whose owners have lower incomes. Is Brandy here? Yes. Hello. Brandy's owners, Dawn and David, have booked her in after finding suspicious growths on her body. So what can we do for Brandy today? She's got a few lumps on her. I think they're like fatty tissue. She's had them for near enough a year. Yeah. And have they got a bit bigger or just changed at all? Bigger, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there's another one here. So that's a new one, is it? Yeah. Good girl. It's a bit deeper, this one. But what we'll do, we'll put a little needle in and get a sample out. It's very easy to see if they are just fat. If we're worried about anything else, we can send the sample off. Was it worrying you? Yeah, because obviously another one grew. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to. Because she's that bit older, obviously, you hear I'm getting cancer, and so I was just getting a bit worried. Just hold her leg for me. Good girl. Lily, aren't you? Such, what a brave dog. Thankfully, Jules has some good news. Yeah, so that's what's come out of that lump, and you can see it's just fat. 
Yeah. So you can see that. That's yeah. very clearly. There's 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 nothing. That's just oh. that's just fat. It's She's heavy. a fairly elderly <laughs> lady, and you know I, I don't think that putting her through a, an operation to remove them, you know, it's not causing any problem for her. Um, I think with any lump. I'd always say monitor it. If it's growing, if it's changing, yeah. if it's starting to bother her, then um, then pop her back for a check. Is it a relief to hear? Phew, yeah, definitely, cancer. yeah, yeah. That was in the back of my mind. Thank you very much. Thank you for help. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 She's got the all clear. She's all healthy. <laughs> Brandy can now rest easy. But there's no rest for me. One thing I've noticed is how much everyone is just working continuously and don't really have time to have a break. I've been on my feet all morning, so I'm a little bit tired, but we've got to soldier on because there's an afternoon to be had. Hello. No worries. That looks full on. Rather her than me. We'll be back with Angelica later. Now, there are many factors that can have an impact on how long a dog spends in kennels. Tyson, for instance, is a staffy, a breed that sadly is often overlooked by potential owners. But other things like ongoing medical treatment or even a dog's behaviour can stand between them and a new home. At Millbrook Animal Centre in Surrey, Jack Russell Radley was one of 37 dogs signed over to the RSPCA after a council eviction. With so many dogs living in a one-bed flat, Radley was never socialised, making him extremely nervous and fearful of humans. And his level of anxiety means that he's currently unable to be rehomed, or even touched. Radley was extremely nervous and stressed. So when he initially came in, we weren't able to handle him. You know, at the moment, if a family took him home, his behaviour would be very difficult. Dogs are very scared and they feel like they haven't got any other option. They can become aggressive. It's not because they're nasty, it's just purely through fear. If Radley is ever to find a new home, he needs to learn to manage his fear. Hoping to help is Sarah Whitehead, a certified clinical animal behaviourist who works with Millbrook on some of their more difficult cases. Wow. Yes, good girl. Very good. Sarah practices positive reinforcement, which uses rewards to teach good behaviour. It's one of the most effective and least stressful methods used by trainers, so it's ideal for nervous boys like Radley. Very first time I meet a dog, particularly one that's fearful, all I'm really interested in is saying to that dog, I understand a little bit about you. I understand that you need some space and some time, and I'm prepared to give you that. Sarah's first session will focus on gaining Radley's trust, but to do that, she needs to make herself as unthreatening as possible. So I always make sure that I'm, I don't put pressure on the dog at this stage. The less eye contact that I give him, the better. The second thing I do is I keep my body language lowered. Oh, scary. Scary person. When, when dogs bark, basically they're just saying, I want you to put dis more distance between yourself and, and myself. And that, that's all that's happening there. He was just doing a little bit of swearing to see if I, if I would move away. He might be swearing now, but Sarah thinks the way to Radley's heart is through his stomach, and she has the perfect treat. So I'm feeding this guy um, bits of cooked chicken. Uh, there aren't many dogs that can't be bribed with cooked chicken, I've discovered. Prefer a Battenberg myself. Sarah's tactics seem to be working. So that's the first time he's taken food out of my hand. So that's a real step forwards, actually. So that's a dog that says, I'm prepared to make direct physical contact with you as a human being. This is fantastic progress for a dog who doesn't like to be touched. What sauce has she got on that chicken? I'm a great believer in getting training in as soon as I can, because what I'd like him to learn is that if he puts his chin on my hand, then good things happen. Good lad. Can do that again? This time I want his chin to come down to my hand. Good. Very nice. 
Lovely. He actually gave me the weight of his chin on my hand then, so I gave him a jackpot reward, which was more than one treat all at once. And I would say I'm going to stop the session for today. I'm really pleased. That's us. We're out of here. Well done, Radley. We'll be back with him later when Sarah steps up his training. Also coming up... Come on, then, girl. Inspector Carl Larson rescues a Labrador cross from a dark and dingy flat. This dog should have seen a, a vet before now. And Angelica's back with abandoned Bob. As vet Jules is faced with a difficult decision. It's possible we're going to have to amputate the leg. In the seaside town of Blackpool, Inspector Carl Larson is enjoying some typical British weather as he responds to a call about a dog infested with fleas. Fleas can become a major problem for a dog. It does cause them to, to scratch and cause bleeding to themselves, which can be quite frustrating because it is quite an easily manageable problem. There, it's Inspector Larson from the RSPCA. Available to have a quick word with me. Inspectors never know what they're going to walk into. Luckily, Carl has come prepared. Let's go use my torch. Just bit light's not a great in here. Just to see what going. Hello. Even by torch light, Carl can see there's a problem. What's the dog called? Angel. With her, we've got quite a lot of bald skin on her. See on the chest there and underneath, she's, is she scratching quite a lot? Chewing as well. The owner accepts Angel's poor skin condition but says he can't afford to get her treated. She needs to go to, to see a vet. Now, I can take her to get treatment, but long term, if she's going to have a flea problem, it's going to return. You say it yourself, you're not able to take her to the vet. However, the vet says that, yes, they do believe that the dog is suffering. At that point, I have to get the dog seized. Eventually, the owner agrees to let Carl take Angel to the vet. But once outside the dark flat, Carl can see the full extent of Angel's hair loss. Come on, then, girl. It's actually a little bit worse than I thought, to be honest. I could see there was some fur loss, particularly on the, the chest around the front there. She's actually chewed her tail to the point where it looks like it's been bleeding a little bit. So this dog should have seen a, a vet before now. Right. Oh, there we go. To get Angel the help she needs, Carl heads straight to vet Carlos Pascal. Hello! Hello, you beautiful. This is Angel. She's a um, sort of two and a half year old okay. lab cross. Let's get you weight. Hey, come on, good girl. Sit, sit. You're beautiful. Oh, you're so cute. How cute is that? You're about 21 kilos. You're so beautiful, you are. <laughs> she may not look her best, but Angel certainly knows how to turn on the charm. We're just going to have a look at the skin to see if there is any evidence of parasites like fleas. We can see some crawling there, just towards my thumb. You can see that one there, and there is another one here. Um, unfortunately, this lady is covering fleas. That area there, that red patch is infected. And with the fleas that we can see them, the quantity and the distribution of the lesions, you will think it's more like a, like a flea allergy dermatitis. She's reacting to the saliva of the flea. At the moment, it's quite obvious what, what our problem is. We need to get rid of those fleas. She's suffering uh, because it's, it's very itchy. This is a very uncomfortable condition. <coughs> She's been like this for a while, you know. This has been happening for several weeks, you know. And all this could have been so easily avoided if Angel had been to see a vet sooner. To treat, you don't need much more than a, a decent flea product, you know, for it. It's not very difficult. Sometimes you can even buy some of them over the counter as well. So it's just it's something that can be very easily prevented, you know. Angel's given the flea treatment she needs, as well as antibiotics and steroids to treat the infection brought on by her scratching. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. See you. Angel will receive her treatment at Kennels. We'll catch up with her later. To find out more about keeping fleas at bay, animal care assistant Laura Maddox is on hand to give me some helpful advice. So this is our friend Tyson, and what are we going to do with him today? Um, so we're going to put on his flea treatment. Um, Which is why you've given me this magic is. bottle of goo. OK. Is that something that you do often with dogs? We do recommend that they have it monthly. You can have it monthly, so you never get fleas in the first place. Is he all right with having a flea treatment? Or is he, because he's incredibly strong, and I'm afraid he might suddenly leap forward and take us with him. No, yeah, he's a really good boy. What you might do is, because he can't see what you're doing, is he might quickly have a look round just to see what's going on. OK. Puncture my seal. Right, Tyson, here it comes. And then do you rub it in or you just leave it? No, you just leave it. Shouldn't touch it. No, don't touch it. Don't bath them for three days. Oh, Tyson, you're out of bath <laughs> for three days. You can go roll in anything. And if you haven't given your dog a flea treatment, what are the telltale signs if it's starting to get fleas? What, what, would, what, um, what, what would give it away? So you, you can actually see fleas. Fleas, obviously, that's the main sign of fleas. <laughs> yeah. um, they have um, flea dirt, which is like a brown... Flea poo. It's flea poo. Flea poo. And it's brown. On your dog. <laughs> and um, they can suffer from um, hair loss. And a lot of dogs are actually allergic to flea bites, and that's why they get these oh. sort of alopecia, itchy, redness. Um, it, it, can, it can be quite sore. And did Tyson used to have a flea problem? Yep, yeah, Tyson has got a flea allergy, so we oh, need to make sure that he definitely gets his flea treatment every month. Yeah, that's you done. You're ready to go. Tyson's available for rehoming and he doesn't have any fleas. Neither do I, but you can't have me. Right, Tyson, we can get you off the table now. Don't jump, don't jump. <laughs> we will supervise it. <laughs> now it's time to check back in with Angelica. I'm at Putney Animal Hospital, experiencing what a typical day is like for the RSPCA's hard-working veterinary staff. Earlier, we met Bob, who was found abandoned after major surgery to repair a fractured leg. This is the pin we were worried about. Clinical director Jules Bancroft wants to remove the metal pins holding his leg in place, but she needs to check it's properly healed. But before she can do that, Bob is anaesthetised and x-rayed to make sure there aren't any underlying complications. The x-rays from today will be compared to ones Jules took a month ago. Now it's really the it's D-Day. We'll, we'll put them on the viewer and we'll compare them with the x-rays from a month ago and see whether the fracture has, has completely healed. If there's any problems, any areas of infection in the bone, it's possible we're going to have to amputate the leg. So let's have a look. Jules doesn't want to have to amputate unless it's absolutely necessary. The fracture was across here. So we were concerned before that there was still a bit of a fracture line there. Is it gone? You can. It's much the same. I have to say, it's much the same. The fracture hasn't quite healed as Jules had hoped, and she can see signs of infection. The question is, we've got to weigh up sort of whether we risk taking it off or whether we leave it on longer and, and give him more time. Jules decides the threat of infection is too great a risk and the pins need to come out. I think we need to give him a chance, but I think we'll probably start removing the X-Fix and sort of see how things feel. So this is the pin that we think is, is causing quite a bit of problem. There's quite a lot of discharge, so we need to take it off. Here, isn't it? So ideally, what we do is we get the big bars off and then we can gently take the other pins that are going into the bone. We can then just take those off. So the problem is, because they're going into live tissue, they're not meant to be kept on for too long. So you can see all the yeah. gunk. Discharge. Discharge. You used the right word. <laughs> you used gunk. gunk. <laughs> <I'll use discharge. laughs> I'm turning into a real vet. This pin... Is this, this going to pull out? So that's because it's too loose. 
um, quite possibly take an infection into the bone. Until you take it out, it's just going to get worse. Thankfully, there's no sign of infection in the final pin. So you've got, again, this one, it's nice and tight, tight in the yeah. bone. OK. So we'll have a feel of the leg. That's where we've got a bit of bony reaction from that infection. Not him you can really there. feel it, yeah. yeah. So it's all looking quite positive, isn't it? Fingers crossed. All will be well. It's down to him now. Bob can now go into recovery, and it shouldn't be long before he's back on all four feet. And I can't wait to get off mine. It's been an exhausting day. Thank you for having me. Learned so much, and it was just lovely to be around all the animals, but I don't know how you do this every single day. It's really rewarding. It is tiring, mm -hmm. but, you know, you get used to it, and you just have to spend more time here. I know. Get a proper job. <laughs> Thank you for your help. No worries, and keep me informed. Absolutely. Yeah, we Brilliant. will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, today has literally been non-stop for Jules and her team. They do an incredible job. And it seems like every day they're giving dogs like Bob a second chance. And fingers crossed he gets a new home really soon. Speaking of homes, I need to get to mine and collapse. Earlier, we met Radley. <laughs> whose extreme nervousness and lack of socialisation means that he's very fearful of human contact. Oh, scary. Animal behaviourist Sarah Whitehead has been trying to gain his trust, and her tasty treats meant Radley was soon eating out of the palm of her hand. A week later, Sarah wants to step up Radley's training. In their last session, he made good progress, but dogs like Radley can be unpredictable. So it, it's very possible today that Radley won't want to play ball with me. Quite literally, he won't want to take a treat from me. He might not want to interact with me at all. It's very typical in dogs that are very stressed in rescue centres. Part of Sarah's plan for today involves getting Radley out of his kennel. But his first challenge will be wearing a harness, something he's probably never done before. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. It's very good. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, then. Let's be so brave. Good boy. Oh, good boy. That's good. Wait, and the first part. Woohoo! First part complete. So far, so good. This is always the scary part. When we can get this part over, the, over his head. There we go. Clever boy. Really good boy. Getting the harness on was much easier than Sarah expected. But once outside, it becomes clear that Radley isn't exactly happy about it. So it definitely feels like the first time he's had a lead on, or certainly been with a human being that he doesn't know taking him out. And he's looking the whole time for an escape route. He says, if I let go of the lead, he'd be off. This is all terribly scary for him. So, um, you know, he's, he's just all about escape at the moment. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. oh now, all right, baby. All right. steady. Good boy. Sarah wants to reduce Radley's stress levels, so takes him to a more homely setting. A pub. Good boy. Not a pub. Good boy. Very good. Sarah's boy. going to use a device called a clicker to help teach Radley the art Very of communication. Great. Hey, nice one. So I love to use the clicker with, uh, with dogs like Radley because it bridges the gap between me and him in terms of communication. And rather than me using words, which he might or might not have heard before, it tells him that's what got it right. It's very quick at capturing the exact split second where the dog got something correct. Any time that he even glances at me, that's all I'm going to be looking for. Very good boy. Clickers can be used when training any dog, and they'll soon learn to associate the sound of a click with a reward. Nice, very good. So I'm getting slightly longer duration. He's looking at me for, well, more than just the split second that he was. Dogs use eye contact in much the same way as us, so it's important for Radley to learn this vital communication skill. Very good. And in a second, what I want to see if I can do is just put his name into this mix so that when I say his name, he actually does recognise that it's something to do with him. 
Radley. This, of course, is how dogs learn what their name is. They learn that uh, when they hear that certain word, that humans respond in a certain way. Radley. He's already cottoning on to the fact that the sound of his name, Radley, very good, means give me eye contact, means look at me. Radley's doing really well, but Sarah doesn't want to push him too far. We started some essential training, but I can see he's saying to me he's tired, he's probably had just enough for today. It's a small step on a long road for Radley, but Sarah is confident he can learn to good conquer boy. his fears. Good boy, yeah, good boy. So the more I see of Radley, the more I see the bright dog that's in there, and I think we're going to see him blossom into a dog that not just tolerates people, but actually enjoys their company. And if we can get a bit of training in as well, make him eminently homeable. We'll be back with Radley later in the series to see if he manages to combat his fears and be ready for rehoming. Right, Still to come, right. we'll be finding out how skinny Staffies, Rocky and Bentley are getting on. And if you need a furry friend in your life, we might just have the one for you. Come on, then, girl. Earlier, we met Black Labrador Cross Angel, whose fleas, fur loss and uncomfortable skin condition... That area there, that red patch is infected. ..didn't stop her turning on the charm. Oh, you're so cute! How cute is that? Angel's owner accepted an adult written caution and she was signed over to the charity. <whistles> Five months on, and flea free Angel. Well done! Good girl! Get it! Has the staff at Blackpool Longview Animal Centre under her spell. She's a good girlie. Especially animal care assistant Katie Eva. We all love her. Um, she's one of our, well, she's one of my favourites. Um, we shouldn't have favourites, but you, you can't help it. It, it. it does happen. She's got the best temperament I think I've probably come across. Just loads of love to give. Loves playing with people, loves people's attention and definitely likes it when you play ball with her. <laughs> when she came in, her skin was, was a mess, but with special baths. I like bath time, don't you? This is not a bath, this is a shower and special tablets. We have managed to get the skin looking pretty much as good as it's going to get, I think. She is still a little bit thin in places, a little bit of thin hair there. Um, skin's a little bit flaky, but that special shampoo, that's, that's working wonders for her. She's cracking. She's lovely, really friendly. Kate is hoping it won't be long before Angel finds the forever home she deserves. Good girl. Angel's doing absolutely fantastic, and hopefully we're going to get a queue of people that come for her. Um, I think we will, because she is she's a cracking little dog. She's great. Come on. Earlier, two skinny, staffy crosses, Rocky and Bentley, were rescued by Hershey Bowl after a call from a concerned member of the public. Rocky and Bentley's test results showed that their poor body condition was simply down to lack of food. Their owners said they were unable to cope and, while remorseful, admitted they hadn't done enough. Due to mitigating personal circumstances, both were given adult written cautions. The good news is, both Rocky and Bentley have found new homes. We're catching up with Bentley in his... Bentley! And as you can see, his transformation is Bentley. incredible. This sprightly four-year-old is now living with Nikki Wilson, her partner Colin and son Aidan. Settled in very quickly within a few days. He was, he was fine. I liked him straight away and um, I wanted to bring him home. Aidan and Bentley's relationship's been really positive from right from the word go. Um, they've settled in like they've always known each other. Bentley has put on almost eight kilos and gone up several dress sizes. He's a healthy weight of 20 kilograms which is exactly, I think, that the vets described them as a, a comfortable size 12. This is very modern. I thought it was a boy. His healthy weight has been achieved by a healthy appetite. He certainly enjoys his food, never leaves anything in his bowl, and regularly goes back to make sure it's empty. No, I'll go back to see if there's any more being put in. When Bentley was rescued, he wasn't getting much exercise, but his new best friend keeps him on his toes. I'm pretty fast like Bentley, and <laughs> I like running with him, and I like um, playing fetch with him. Good 
and after a bit of fetch, there are plenty of comfy spots for Bentley to chill out. Bentley always lies on my bed because he he likes me and he likes um, doing stuff with me and he likes playing. <laughs> good boy, good boy. That's why I, I feel like a lucky boy. And Bentley is very lucky to have you too, Aidan. Things are also looking up for Bob over in Putney. It's only been a week since his operation, and you'd hardly know he was ever at risk of losing his leg. OK. Wait, wait. Looks like he likes taking vet surgeon Ellie Cavale for walks. Good boy. We are really happy with how Bob has done. He's been through a lot. He's been so friendly with all the staff. So happy, you know, even when there was a little bit of an infection and we were a bit worried about his leg. He was just happy to see us wagging his tail. He's just a happy dog, basically. And he's gonna make someone a really lovely pet. Come on, Bob, let's go. Walkies. Good boy. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life. But that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them. And there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Red. She's a three-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier cross. She's been with us for about six months now. Red came in with her boyfriend after they were mistreated. She came in heavily pregnant. She had to have a C-section, unfortunately. But she did have seven healthy puppies, all of which have grown up, found their own homes, and now she's looking for her own home. Good girl. The perfect home for Red would be an adult home, preferably no other animals in the house. Someone who's got a lot of time and patience to spend with her, put in training and socialisation. Good girl. Sit. Someone who can give her lots of cuddles and love. Red loves to tear around in the compounds, playing with balls and chasing every toy that you throw for her. She loves a good swim in the swimming pool on a hot day. And most importantly, she loves a good cuddle and a kiss. Red hasn't had the best start in life, so she is looking for her forever home. And it would be nice to find the right person just for her, because she'd make the perfect family dog. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Can you put that camera down? Yeah. Hide that out of the way, yeah. Right. See the puppies? Can I see? Inspector Anthony Joins gets involved with a police sting How on much? roadside puppy sellers. How much? It's one or one. This is definitely different. It's a baptism of fire for vet Riaz Remu as he experiences operating in the field for the first time. The dog that we've just operated on literally got up from the anaesthetic and it's just bolted. Stone. So basically the dog was stoned. People throwing stones at it. And a case of cruelty tests Anthony. Honestly, it's not much that breaks me, but I've just seen that dog. Um, that's a low point for me, that. 